So tonight, the title is Filled with Joy. Woo! Woo! Count it all joy. Count it all joy when you fall into the trial. But you guys are about like this. Hey, yeah, it's good. You still remember the song? Huh? We, we had a good time. Boy, that was fun. Count it all joy when you fall into the trial. Man, that was fun. We had, we had a good time. That was, we always have a good time in here. But we're going to go to uh, Proverbs 12 first. You, you got to go there, right? Yeah. Whoop. You got to go to Proverbs 12. And uh, we're going to look at a few scriptures tonight. You know, you know, that's what we do, right? We look at the scripture. We look at the word. The word of God. And then we get excited about it because it's alive. It's a living, living in us, abiding in us. Amen. Proverbs twelve twenty five. And uh, what page you got there? Seven eighty three. If you got the new New King James there, <coughs> the one provided. So Proverbs 12, 25, anxiety in the heart of man causes depression. But a good word makes it glad. Amen. We're going to give a good word today. Amen. We're going <laughs> to get glad. Amen. We're going to get glad. Anxiety weighs us down, causes depression. You don't want that. No. Millions of people suffer from depression. It's a big problem, right? A big problem in our world. And now they prescribe all kinds of drugs for depression. Well, uh, we're going we're gonna to figure out how to solve depression tonight. Anybody who wants to solve depression can solve depression. All right? It's like I say all the time. People addicted to this, addicted to that. I, you know, I, they go to all these years of counseling and, and I say, just get on fire for Jesus. Amen. Just get excited about the Lord. Get, get, get full of the Lord. Get full of the Spirit. And all those good things go away. Amen. They all go away. Amen. Well, depression will go away too. Amen. So we're going to talk about it. Depression, of course, can ruin uh, our life. Yeah. And it affects our life in many ways, you know, it's going to affect your family life, right? If, if you're depressed or your parents are depressed or someone in your family is depressed, it affects the whole family. Amen. One person can really affect the whole family, right? If they're really in depression, diagnosed, you know, as depressed, uh, school, of course, is going to be heavily affected if someone is depressed. And I know you've dealt with some of that in there. Yeah. In the school, even our appetite, right, would be affected by depression. Our physical health will be affected by depression. Depression can destroy us. It can destroy our whole life if we're depressed. Some great people of God were depressed, or well, they showed signs of depression. I don't know if you think about Elijah. Elijah, who come on, he he wanted to die after he won the big victory. He, he, he outrun the chariots. It's like, he should, be on, he should be on Victory Mountain, not Depression Mountain. He outran horses. Hello? He outran the horses. He should be like, woo, I just outran the horses. This is the greatest day of my life. <laughs> Instead, uh, Jezebel said, I, I, you're going to be dead in 24 hours. And so he got depressed. And he hid under a tree and wanted to die. Hello? Well, <laughs> that's sad. That's really sad. But, you know, that's when the enemy comes, right? When we're, when we're having a victory. The enemy comes when we're having a victory and then paints, paints a picture of death. He knows when we're weak. He knows the time to get to us. He, he, he wants to come in and destroy and he'll give us thoughts. We, we got to start thinking on thoughts. He'll give us thoughts to think on. And well, who, what, what are we going to do with those thoughts? 
2 Corinthians 10, 5. Cast down every thought, imagination, that exalts itself, skin, knowledge of God. Bringing every thought into captivity and do obedience to Christ. Amen. You got to bring those thoughts into captivity. Yeah. Cast down the thoughts from the enemy or you're going to get depressed. Amen. Obviously, Elijah was not thinking good yeah. at that moment. Whatever he, he started to think on, probably that Jezebel wanted to kill him. And so he started getting depressed. Well, I mean, God just made him run faster than the horses. Couldn't God protect him from Jezebel? Yes. <laughs> Come on. Come on, when the thoughts of the enemy come in, we got to replace them. With the right thoughts. With God thoughts. I'm created by God. I'm valuable to God. I'm loved by God. I'm more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ, my Lord, who loved me and gave himself for me. Amen. Come on, that's replacing the wrong thoughts. Greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. Amen. Give me the verse. Come on. First John 4, 4. Come on, disciples got to know that verse. You're not a disciple until you know First John 4, 4. I'm just, you know, that's just, you're not a disciple yet. I'm just, I'm, just, I'm just setting a bar. I'm setting a bar. I'm setting a bar. You're not a disciple until you know First John 4, 4, and you know John 10, 10. And you know, of course, John 3, 16. Huh? Yeah. I could go through a lot of them, but I don't think you want you. I don't think you want me to do that. <laughs> Mark eleven twenty three. Come on, come on. Woo, glory. <laughs> Romans eight thirty one. Romans eight twenty eight. <laughs> come on now. Come on. We got to replace the thoughts with God's word, so we got to know God's word. Amen. We're getting there. We're getting there. I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> If we, if we let the enemy come, on, come in, he's going to create chaos in our mind, right? You know, there's been a lot of books written about it. The battlefield of the mind. That, that's where a battle takes place all the time. And that's where people get depressed. They think on it and they think on it and they think on it. What are they, if they're thinking on the wrong thought, they're going to get depressed. What are we thinking on, right? That, that's a very, 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 very important. What we're thinking on. That's why the Bible tells us all over the place to think on God's word. And cast down thoughts that are against God. Against the knowledge of God, right? When you know God, you know who he is. And a thought comes in that goes against who you know he is, then you cast it down. We got to get a hold of our thoughts. Because yeah. that'll put us right into the pit, the pit of depression. Yeah. That's a pit. And we're going to go to a verse about the pit <laughs> Psalm 40. Ooh. Psalm 40. The pit. <clears throat> Psalm 40, verse 2. The pit. You see that? 681. 681. Oh, let's read one there. <laughs> Psalm 40, verse 1. I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined to me and heard my cry. He also brought me up out of the horrible pit, <laughs> out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock and establish my steps. Ooh, three. He has put a new song in my mouth. Yeah. Praise to our God. Many will see it in fear and will trust in the Lord. Woo! Blessed is the man who makes the Lord his trust <laughs> and does not respect the proud nor such a, as turn aside to lies. Oh man, this is, good. This is a good psalm, isn't it? This is loaded. This is loaded. This is a loaded psalm right here. Woo! 
Woo! Man, we could, we could just, we could read the whole thing, couldn't we? We could. We could. We could. We could. I see him. There's more about the pit in there. No, I was in there. <laughs> Woo! See, David actually showed signs of depression. Because, you know, a lot of his psalms, you'll see him kind of lamenting a bit, but he always comes back with, but my God. My God. You know, he recognizes, he recognizes who's going to help him. And that's all throughout here. I was just looking through it, you know. That's all throughout here. And he realizes God's going to deliver him. Boy, and he knew that, right? We know, we know the story of David. He knew. He knew God. And he knew God was going to deliver him. But even David had thoughts, wrong thoughts, right, that he had to overcome. He had to overcome the wrong thoughts. And we know David wrote a lot of wonderful worship music to God. Hallelujah. And I'm sure sometimes, and we know these, these psalms are, you know, worship music. He, he, would, he would talk about how he was hurting, and then he'd talk about how God's going to deliver him. Because he knew his God. Amen. But I'm talking about the pit here, wasn't I? Yeah. <laughs> God's going to pull us out of the pit. Amen. That's good news, right? I don't want to be in the pit. You want to be in the pit? No. The miry clay? I sound like I'm stuck. Like in the sand. You've been stuck in the sand? Woo! Well, that's not fun. We were stuck in the sand once, once, or twice. I don't know. Kids might remember. <laughs> I know once for sure. Stuck in the sand. In the van. Someone took the van out on the sand. Who would do such a thing? Yeah. <laughs> She's back there. <laughs> it's not a four wheel drive. <laughs> so we got stuck. We had someone else stuck. A friend, a friend of ours was in town. They got stuck. Remember that? We went and rescued them. Stuck. Stuck in the pit. Stuck in the mire of clay. Right? You just feel like you are stuck. And you keep spinning your tires. That's like depression. Yeah. And you're just digging in. Yeah. You're going deeper and deeper. You feel like you can't get out. Right? That's how a lot of people feel. They feel about depression. I can't get out of this. I can't get out. I'm so depressed. I can't get out of this. Well, we can get out of it. Amen. If we trust in God. Really, if you read through the song, psalm, that's what he's saying. And he says it in verse 4. Did we read verse 4? I can't remember. Yeah, we read it, right? Blessed is the man who makes the Lord his trust. Amen. His trust. That's going to bring us out of the pit. If we put our trust in God, he's going to take us out of the pit. Amen. He's faithful to us if we trust in him. I'm thinking about grace. Oh, I'm thinking about grace. I got grace. I got grace thinking all over me. Ooh, watch out for Sunday. Watch out. Watch out. Watch out. Socks are going to come off on Sunday. <laughs> well, should I, should I reveal Sunday night? We're going to talk about the healing power of God. I think we're going to do a whole series on it. We're going to talk about healing, the healing power of God, and we're going to see manifestations Amen. of the healing power of God. Yeah, yeah. Woo! Woo! Oh, man, you guys are getting, you guys are getting all the previews. I don't know. Man. You guys are blessed. <laughs> Socks are coming off. But we got to keep our eyes on Jesus to come out of the pit the miry clay. Come on. He'll get us out of the pit and set our feet on solid ground. Solid ground. Yeah. Not sand, not the pit, <laughs> not the miry clay. What, what's solid? What's solid? The rock. Okay, get, get more specific. The Jesus, the word. The word is solid. Jesus said, build your house on the rock. His word. Hey Amen. That'd be another great scripture up here. We're around the room. <laughs> I got a lot of scriptures I want to put on the wall. <laughs> Build on the rock. Ooh. Ooh. 
Come on. The word of God is solid. It's solid. Yeah, it's solid. That's, that's what we need to build on. And you know, you know me, right? Yeah. I emphasize knowing the word all the time. Why? Because we got to build on the rock. We got, we got to know his word. We got to know what he said to build on the rock. Come on. It, 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 how many people would not be in depression if they knew the word? All of them. <laughs> All of them. Because they would know him. They would truly know him, right? Amen. You got to know his word. Of course, you got to believe his word, right? It's not just intellectual uh, assent. Is that the right word? Intellectual uh, uh, acknowledgement. Yeah, I know that verse. Brother. Oh, I've heard that before, brother. Okay. Do you know it, though? Is it living on the inside? Is it abiding in you, right? If it's abiding in us, come on now. And I say, and I come to you and you get, you're in depression. I say, brother, don't you know 1 John 4, 4? And they say, what's that? I say, greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. And they go, ooh. And then I say it again. Greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. You getting this? And they're depressed. They were said they were depressed. I'm like, and they're a Christian, right? Maybe they don't know the verse yet. Maybe they don't know the word yet, but I'm giving the word. I'm helping them build on the foundation of the word. And so I say, no, no, you got to get this. You got to get this. Greater is he who is in you than he who who is in the world. Come on now. And they start meditating on that. And going, wait a second. Why am I depressed? I got the greater one living in me. I got God living in me. I'm a temple of the Holy Spirit. I got God on the inside of me. Why am I depressed? I'm not depressed. I got the greater one on the inside. And pretty soon, they're taking a dance. Yeah. Come on now. Instead of, I'm so Come on. What happened? They got a hold of the word. Amen. They built on the foundation of the word. Amen. Amen. God's word shows us the truth, the way the right way to think, right? We talk about all the time right here. Romans, there's another verse for you. You better know. You're not a disciple until you know Romans 12 too. Romans 12 too. Romans 12 too. Thank you. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That you may prove what is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Come on now. We got to know. Amen. We got to know his word. We got to have our minds renewed with what he, how he thinks. Amen. So we think like he thinks. Right? We talked about God's loving instructions a few weeks ago, right? God's got loving instructions for us to stay out of depression. Amen. He's got all kinds of instructions for us. One of the instructions we need to follow is be around believers. Amen? Amen. Don't forsake the assembly yourselves together. Why? Because you're, you're supposed to be with the body. Amen. You're going to get built up with the body. Amen. Hallelujah. I attribute a lot of my success as a Christian as being around the body. Mm -hmm. Have a spiritual leader. Amen. Have a good pastor. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I had a good pastor. Amen. Spiritual leader. You got to be around strong believers. That'll, that'll really help. Big time. Be around strong spiritual, real spiritual people. Real 
spiritual people. Not flaky, not religious, spiritual. <laughs> what is a real spiritual person? They're mature. They're mature in Christ. Amen. They know God's word and they know God. Now, they're going to miss it too. I, you know, I have mentors in the faith that are, that are amazing, amazing people of God, right? But they'll admit they miss it. We all miss it. If you haven't missed it, then you're a liar. And <laughs> let's have an altar call for liars. We all miss it in some way, in some fashion, and, and we might not say everything perfect at all times. And, and, and that goes for every pastor and leader there is. But you want to be under someone who is mature. Not perfect, mature. Because <laughs> no one's perfect except Jesus. And we're all under him. Amen. We're all under Jesus. But if we want to stay out of depression, these are some good clues. Be around believers, be around leaders, spiritual leaders, mature spiritual people. Listen to God. Come on. Listen to his word. Listen to his instructions in the word, which you're going to get a lot around the believers. And find out what he wants you to do. And let's look at something right now he wants us to do. Right here, right here. Ephesians 5. He got to. Ephesians 5. Here's something that God says to us in the word. Of course, through the Apostle Paul, who wrote much of the New Testament, and uh, as the Bible says of its own self, right, all Scripture is given by inspiration of God through the Holy Spirit, and men, men, men of God were moved with the Holy Spirit to write what's been written, and so we have God's, we have God's mind written for us. So it would be silly to ignore anything. In the word. In fact, oh boy, don't get me started. <laughs> I was listening to uh, one, of my, one of my favorites today, <laughs> Misters, and uh, he said, he said uh, just you know, in, in passing, he said, he said uh, well, he's talking about being, being blessed, and he said, you know, we speak in tongues, we pray in tongues, and but he said, uh, Parham, I think it was, Charles Parham, I told, I told you, it's Charles, I can't remember, Parham, Parham, anyhow, Parham's last name, he said he was in the 1800s, he knew William Seymour in the Azusa Street Revival, and if you know anything about Azusa Street Revival, it was crazy, it was wild times, right, people growing out limbs, eyes being open, deaf ears hearing, people rolling through the aisles, swinging from chandeliers, literally, fire appearing on the top of the building, so the fire department came, it wasn't real fire, it was spiritual fire. Crazy stuff, right? Just crazy stuff. Well, Parham was associated with that. And he, he taught tongues. He taught speaking in tongues. And so did, of course, Seymour, because that's why that all happened. It was, you don't get that without spirit filled. So uh, he said Parham, this was just in passing, he said Parham, was, his whole family and himself were under death threats all the time for teaching on tongues, Teaching about praying in tongues when it's in the Bible. <laughs> Under death threat. Isn't that crazy? That's insane. Well, who, do, who would do that? Well, the world doesn't care. Tell me who would do that. Get a little more specific. Religious Pharisees do that. Who came after Jesus? The Pharisees. The Pharisees. Pharisees hate reality. Pharisees are all hypocrites. Pharisees don't want truth. If you speak truth, Pharisees hate it. <laughs> That's the truth. Pharisees don't want truth. They're hypocrites. So God gave us his word so we would do it, including speaking in tongues, praying in tongues. He said, do this. Jesus said, do it. Yeah. You know that, right? <laughs> so we're supposed to do it. Oh, well, that right there, that'll, that's not in my notes, but that'll, that'll, that'll bring you right out of depression. Get filled up with the Spirit, which we're going to talk a little bit more right here. 
in Ephesians 5.18. What page is that? Um, 1,436. And do not be drunk with wine. Hello? That's alcohol. That's not the new wine. That's not the Holy Spirit, which he's going to talk about right now. In which is dissipation, uh, evilness, right? Drunkenness. It's going to cause trouble. <laughs> you get drunk with alcohol. But be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Weren't we just doing that? Yeah, Amen. They were, they were singing new songs right here. Those, those, those are psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. That's what that was. That's what just happened. We just did the Bible. We did. We did the Bible. We're supposed to do the Bible. That's we're, everything in there we're supposed, supposed to do. Yeah. <laughs> Verse 20, giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Right? In the name. In the name. Don't we aren't ashamed of the name, are we? No. We talked about on Sunday how pastors won't even pray in the name of Jesus anymore. They say, in his name we pray. And I go, who's his? <laughs> What's wrong with saying Jesus? <laughs> in your name we pray. Amen. Well, you afraid of saying Jesus? Pastor? Pastor, you afraid, of, you afraid of saying Jesus? That's sad. Come on now. We got to wake up. A lot of sick stuff out there. Come on. Submitting to one another in the fear of God. Ooh, we could go off there for a while. <laughs> the fear of God. Come on now. You know what the fear of God is, right? We talked about it. We talked about it all the time. But uh, in the fear, fear of God is a respect and awe of God. Amen. It's not fear like an a, a, a abusive dad or something. Yeah. Not at all. It's, it's someone you know who he is. And you know who he is. And he is God. So you respect him as, as, much as, you, as much as anybody, right? He gets all respect, honor, and glory, and power. Amen. We are in awe of God. That's, that's fear of God. Yeah. Not, not, you know, a lot, of, a, lot of, a lot of times now, you know, in my day, awesome was the big word. Now, I don't know what the cool word is anymore. You guys always have a new cool word. <laughs> but awesome was art in my day. Everything was awesome, right? It was awesome. Everybody, awesome. All this pizza is awesome. This show, that's awesome. Everything was awesome. Well, there's only one who's really awesome. Amen. He's the only awesome one, really. Amen. He is the only awesome one. In the, real, in the real definition of awesome, there is only one. Awesome God. The song. Our God is an awesome God, reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. You know, we had to sing it. You know, we had to do it. That's your favorite song, right? Yeah, one of them. One of them. But see, these are great instructions for us right here to stay out of the pit of depression right here. You get filled up with the Spirit. Come on, singing to the Lord. Making melody in your heart to the Lord. Giving thanks. Come on. To the Lord. To God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And what happens when we do this? What happens? We get filled with the Spirit. Amen. Well, see, like I say, we got to build on this. We got to do it. And we can't leave it out. I said we can't leave it out. We don't leave out anything. Come on. We don't leave out tongues. We don't leave out singing from our hearts. Amen. That's why we're called, eh, they don't use it much anymore, that word, the word, but full gospel. Yeah. This is a full gospel church. Amen. That simply means we actually believe everything in here. Yeah. <laughs> and we want to do everything in here. Amen. We just don't talk about it. They have nice religious homilies. That's what they call them, homilies. How was the homily today, Pastor? How was your homily? 
It's a sermon in a theological word. Come on. <laughs> we don't just want to have religious homilies. We want the word. We want power. We want spirit. Amen. Amen. And we got to be filled with the spirit to be filled with joy. Amen. Amen. Being filled with spirit is a good, good thing to do. Amen. We talk about it a lot around here because it's all over the Bible. That's right. It's all over New Testament. Amen. New Covenant. Yeah. We're in the New Covenant. New Covenant is to be filled with the Spirit. Amen. That's right. Old Covenant, they weren't filled with the Spirit. They had to rely on the prophet to come who had the Spirit on him. And in Christianity, we can all have the Spirit. In us and upon us. When you're born again, you get the Spirit in you. When you're baptized in the Holy Spirit, you get the Spirit upon you. Ooh, <laughs> Ooh that's Bible right there. Who glory. And that, that'll set us apart. That'll, that'll make us real Christians. <laughs> Come on now. The world's seen a lot of fake stuff, right? Fake religion, war, lukewarmness, and it doesn't need to see any more of that. Come on, we got to be the ones living the real deal. Yeah, True, real Christianity. Not depression, amen. not depressed Christians. No, the world does not need to see a depressed Christian. Ooh, that's right. amen. No, we, they don't need to see it. Yeah. We shouldn't want them to see it. Yeah. <laughs> Why? Because we're in Christ. And Christ is not depressed yeah. at all. Yeah. At all. Yeah. No, I was thinking about this today. I was thinking, you know, we're supposed to, everything he is, we are. And so that's a great, that's a great way to live by faith. Jesus is victorious. He never fails. That makes you and me victorious. Come on now. That makes us victorious. Because we are in him. If you're in him, you can say, well, I don't feel victorious, but I'm in Christ. <laughs> I'm in Christ. So I, I don't feel real victorious right now, but I'll tell you what. I'm in Christ, so I am victorious. Thanks be to God who always causes me to triumph in Christ Jesus. Thanks be to God who always gives me the victory through my Lord Jesus Christ. Come on. We identify with who, who we are, but who he is. Who he is. Because we're in him. And he's victorious. He's not depressed. He's not down at all. Hallelujah. See, there's no way we can be depressed when we're filled with the Spirit. Amen. Mm. No, no. Can't happen. Amen. We will not be able to be, we will not be, we will not be able to be unhappy. Did I say that right? Yeah. You won't be able to be unhappy. Amen. Why? Because you feel the Spirit. <laughs> Come on. And, and when you feel the Spirit, there's joy. Amen. Yeah. We're getting there. We're getting there. We, we might I get ahead of the, get ahead of myself here. We we might have to take some laps in the church. We might have to take, we might have to do some shouting. Come on, because we are victorious. We are not depressed. We might have to shout from in the sanctuary and get on the roof tube, rooftop and shout. Not the roof tube. Please don't get on the roof tube. Get on the rooftop. <laughs> <laughs> we get up there. Oh, it's cold out there right now. I wouldn't suggest it. I can't, we can't even get it heated up in here because our heater isn't meant for this kind of weather. <laughs> Come on. I didn't know it was going to be cold in there. I had no clue. I, uh, but it's all right. We're going to have fun anyhow. We're going to be victorious anyhow, right? We're victorious saints. We're not depressed saints. We're the victorious saints. And we're going to shout it. That I am not depressed 
I am victorious in Christ Jesus. You know, heaven, heaven is going to be much different than most people think. There's going to be shouting. There's going to be running. There's going to be dancing. There's going to be a lot of laughing. It's going to be a fun time. Not fun like the world knows fun, right? Go down to the bar and get drunk. And, and they, have a good, they have a good time down there to them, right? That's a good time. Ooh, we're going to be rejoicing about God. Yeah. And the Spirit of God's going to be there, and God's going to be there, and Jesus is going to be there, and we're going to be like, woo, 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 and that'll go on for a few billion years. You can't measure it in eternity, but you know what I'm talking about. You just be a little bit like, woo, woo, and God, God, God will reveal another side of himself to us. We'll, we'll think we've seen it all. And God will say, hey, you haven't seen nothing yet. You ain't seen nothing yet. Come on now. This is God. We're not, we're not going to get exhausted with God. We're not going to get bored with God ever. Ever. God is not boring in any way. People think, people think church is boring, right? Many people in the world do not come to church because they think it's boring. Well, well, you, you ain't saved, obviously, but... <laughs> If you're a Christian, mm, mm, I, I go different places. I get different. You know, I think about these different roads I could take. You know, <laughs> but I tell you what, it, it, it's going to be a lot different than most people think. Come on now, you guys are so loud at that church. The yeah, music's loud. The preacher's loud. It's also loud. Well, wait till you get to heaven. It's going to be a lot louder. <laughs> it's going to be a lot louder. Come on. Deafening praise forever and ever. We'll hear the praises of God. I'm sure probably all over, all over eternity, we're going to hear praises to God all the time. We don't need to sleep. Right? You don't need to quiet people down. Shh, I'm trying to sleep. Shh. No, you don't need that, right? We'll be walk, walking around eternity, enjoying. I, mean, I know there's going to be fellowship with the saints and our brothers and sisters, you know. And, and then there'll just be praises going on all the time. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's we just join in whatever we join in. Just join in. We, we go on. We join in. Go on. Join. Go. I mean, we know the angels of God are singing holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty constantly forever. Forever. So we got to be part of that. But I don't, I don't think that'll be our job for eternity. You know, to say holy, holy, holy is Lord God Almighty. That's their job. <laughs> God created them for that. And they do. They love it. No problem doing it. Whatever God created you for, for eternity, I don't know what that is. And I don't know what, I, I don't know what I'm going to be doing for eternity. But I know I'm going to love it. Because God knows what he put in here. He knows how he made me. He knows what I'm made for, for all eternity. He knew. Right? Before I was ever born on the earth. He knew. He knew. Come on. And so whatever he has for us is going to be good forever. That's one, that's one reason to get joyful right there. Come on. God's got good things for us forever. He's got a, he's got a good occupation for us forever. <laughs> whatever that is, right? I know we're going to enjoy it. Because if God set it up for us, ooh, it's going to be good. Oh, it's going to be good. I love preaching the word. And that's, I, I get to do that now all the time. Ooh, that is a blessing. Because I worked 7, 11, 12 years. That was not. <laughs> but God can get us to the right spot. And in eternity, you know, we, we're definitely going to be the right spot. Because we're going to see Jesus. And we're going to hear, well done. Well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. I'll make you ruler over much. Ooh, come on now. And Jesus is then going to give us our marching orders. I'll make you ruler over many things. I don't know what that entails. I don't think anybody does. You could, come, you could conjure up some ideas. 
You know, I've heard people talk about why are all the planets there? Maybe God has plans for all the planets. There's going to be things going on all the planets. I don't know. I don't know. But I'll tell you what. He didn't say that for no reason. That isn't in the Bible for no reason. He, if we're faithful here, he's going to put us over many things. Ooh, and whatever he puts us in charge of, we're going to enjoy. Man, you got no devil to, you got no devil to mess with there. <laughs> All you got is the saints of God. And when we're in, when we're in eternity with the saints, come on, uh, come on. I, got, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't I don't think there's going to be a lot of disobedience. I don't think there's going to be a lot of rebellion, do you? I don't think so. I don't think so. I think, I think we'll all be really submitted. I think so. I think so. Because when Jesus gives an order, I, I got a feeling we'll just, we'll just go for it. Don't you? Because Jesus is perfect all the time. He has never done anything wrong. Isn't that amazing? To have absolute, absolute perfection. I think about the time that we get to sit under his government forever. His ruling forever. His perfectness forever. That's amazing. We have so many crazy leaders on the earth. Insane, crazy people. Just crazy people. I won't name any names, but I know you're talking about. I know you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> we got crazy people. I mean, leaders. I mean, I'm talking, I'm talking huge leaders of countries, just nuts. Absolutely insane people. And yet, and, 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 and then we're going we're gonna to sit under the lordship of Jesus forever. And he will never, ever do anything wrong, ever. Never make a wrong decision. Never make a wrong move. Never speak a wrong word, Ever. Isn't that amazing? I find that amazing. Because we're so used to this world. In this world, we, we run into so much craziness and so many weird things and so many weird words and so many just weird, right? A lot of weird stuff everywhere. In eternity, when Jesus says something, we just go, yep. That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Every time, it's going to be, yep, he's right. Woo, glory. I like that. Ooh, I like it. I like it. We got another scripture. One more, well, at least one more. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just preaching. You never know with PV, right? <laughs> it's like a youth camp. <laughs> I love that story. Christian, he, uh, Brian, Pastor Brian says, hey, Pastor Vern, you got something? I said, hey, I kind of sound like him, didn't I? That was a good imitation. Yeah. Pastor Vern, you got something? That's pretty good. No? Uh, really I have Sam's online, maybe you can tell me. Sam, it might sound like Pastor Brian. <laughs> and I come up, and it's lunchtime, and Christian taps his neighbor, who's from the, probably from down Eugene. He says, it's going to be a while. It's going to be a while. Just hold on. We are not having lunch for a little bit here. <laughs> And I only went for an hour or so, right? <laughs> it was lunchtime. <laughs> I'm sure Pastor Brian's going, Whew. I didn't know it was going to be an hour, but okay. We're on a schedule. We're on a schedule. We got a schedule. Yeah. They did have a schedule. I broke their schedule really good every time. I broke it at night. I broke it in the afternoon. I broke all the schedules. <laughs> That's why we don't have a clock on the wall. <laughs> oh my, we having fun. <laughs> John 15, 9, did we get there? I don't remember. Wow, I thought I said it. We having too much fun. We got to stop having so much fun in church, you know. We got to be more serious. <laughs> John 15, 9, we've been in John 15 a lot recently, haven't we? Throughout the Bear the Fruit series, boy, I tell you, we talked we talk a lot about John 15. But we are in John uh, 15, 9. That uh, is right 
after he says that you bear much fruit, right? We talked about long time for weeks. John 15, 9, as the Father loved me, I also have loved you. Abide in my love. Ooh, that's good right there, isn't it? It's Valentine's Day. Abide in his love. He loves us. We abide in his love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. Ooh, notice that. We got to do what he said. Just as I have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. But even Jesus had to do what the father said. And then he abode in his love. Amen. Verse 11, these things I have spoken to you that my joy may remain in you and that your joy may be full. Notice he says he has joy, right? Jesus is full of joy. My joy. He's got joy. He's not a sad Jesus. He doesn't have a sad, sour look, right? He's not up there in eternity sitting at the right hand of the Father going, I just don't know what we're going to do. This world down there is a mess. I don't know. Father, what are we going to do? No, no, no. He's full of joy. He's filled with joy. Amen. He's joy filled. He's anointed with the oil of gladness. Hebrews 1 9, which he's quoting the Old Testament. He quotes the Old Testament, but Hebrews 1 9 says he's anointed with the oil of gladness, not sadness. <laughs> I thought you knew that one. I think that one. That's, one of my, that's one of my favorites. <laughs> he's anointed with the oil of gladness, not sadness. Gladness. He wants us full of joy. Why would Jesus want us full of joy if he wasn't full of joy? He didn't say, have a sad, sour face and preach the word. Brothers and sisters, we are gathered here today to look at the word of God. Would you open with me to Psalm 23? Come on now. Jesus wants us full of joy. Yeah. Not full of sorrow. Not full of agony or worry or depression. Yeah. Filled with joy. And he says, notice he says, he spoke, I have spoken to you that my joy may remain in you. Yeah. He spoke something to us, didn't he? Yeah. To bring us joy. <laughs> he takes us back to the word. The things I spoke to you. Remember, Jesus is the Word. He's the Word. Jesus is the Word. He spoke things to us. He's the Word. The Word spoke. The Word spoke. You're reading the Word. Yeah. <laughs> Relatives there? <laughs> That's funny. These kids. These kids. <laughs> Ouch. Ouch. He spoke... He spoke to us to bring us joy. Because ba if we base his life on his word, we get joy. Base our lives on what he said. Not on our feelings. Nothing more than feelings. <laughs> I just don't feel good today. I just feel so sad today. That's not what Jesus said. Jesus said, didn't, don't, you don't base your life on your feelings. Because your feelings are going to change the next five minutes. Amen. But I feel happy. Oh, I feel bad. Oh, I feel happy. Oh, I feel bad. Oh. That's called roller coaster Christianity. Yeah. A lot of people live on that roller coaster. That's not how Christianity is supposed to be. That's a good place for an amen. amen. I'll get myself one. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Come on. You don't want to live on the roller coaster. I don't want to live on the roller coaster. I want to live in joy. Amen. So we don't base our lives on the feeling or what the newspaper says or what the news says. Yeah. I can't watch the news anymore. I haven't watched it in a couple of years. More than that, maybe. I don't know. I haven't watched the news in a long time. Because it's depressing. <laughs> it's very depressing. That right there would solve a lot of depression right there. Just turn off the news. I'm serious. 
I'm serious. I, I, I used to have the TV on quite often back, well, this is, this is 2000. It was after, it was 2020 when I just turned it off. And I used to have, uh, you know, a lot of the uh, news programs on, I'd watch it. <coughs> and uh, looking back on it, that was depressing. <laughs> and don't turn it back on. <laughs> you know, Jim, Jim, he said he turned it off too. In fact, he went to Vera, he said, turn it off and don't turn it back on. Because he realized it was just full of lies. It hit him one day when he was out in the field. It's all lies. He probably told you that story. It's all lies. Everything's a lie on there. Turn it off, don't turn it back. News. Turn it off. Shut it off. I think, they, I think it says when they canceled cable, they did all, you know, they just got rid of it all. Because it's junk, it's lies. It'll depress you. We don't base our lives on that junk. Most all of it, we don't even need to hear. Don't base our lives, or, 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 or yeah, we don't base our lives on the checkbook. But that'll, that'll get you depressed, right? Yeah. Well, I got, I got some money in my account. I don't have money in my account. I got some money in my account. I don't have money in my account. Well, that's bad. That's a bad way to live. Yeah. No. We don't base our lives on what friends think about us. Amen. Amen. That'll get you depressed real good. Yeah. Well, my friend likes me today. <laughs> I'm so happy. Oh, they don't like me today. I don't know what happened, but they don't like me. Oh, I'm kind of sad. My friend doesn't like me today. Come on. We hitting some stuff here? No, the word has to be the foundation. And that's where we get real joy. From God. We know what God said. We know who he is. We do what he said. Amen. Amen. Romans 14, 17. This should be the last one. But you never know. <laughs> you know. You know PV. Woo. Just when you think he's done, he's not done yet. Romans 14, 17. You got a page number? Yeah, 1394. 1394. Romans 14, 17. For the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking. Now we got to eat and drink. We, had, we ate and drank tonight. We had a nice dinner. But what's it really about? What's it really about? Righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Ooh. That's true kingdom. Hello? That's the kingdom of God right there. It's full of righteousness. It's full of peace. It's full of joy. That's real Christianity. That's the real kingdom of God. Not the false. We don't want the false. We don't want the false. We want the real deal. That's the real deal. Righteousness, peace, and joy. Don't you want to walk in the real, real deal? Not the false. Come on. God wants us and needs us to walk in that. Righteousness, peace, and joy. He's provided it all, hasn't he? You've been made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You've been washed and cleansed of all sin. you got the peace of God. Jesus said, my, my peace I give to you. We can walk in the peace of God in the storm as he did when the storm was. He was in the boat, right? He was, he was in the peace. He was still in peace. And he still had joy. Those are provisions we have in Christ. And that's what the kingdom's about. Not about eating and drinking. <laughs> I think it was Reinhard Bunk, he said, the more, the more, uh, how did he put it? The more donuts and coffee you need at church, the less Holy Spirit you have. <laughs> Something like that. In other words, Hey, we didn't, have a, we didn't have a great service today. Bring more food in next week. And then the next week, there wasn't a lot of power today. There wasn't a lot of spirit today. Bring in some more food. Not that it's wrong to eat. We have snacks. But that's not the focus at all, is it? That is not the focus at all. If we have some food, wonderful. We're going to have a, we're gonna have a, a wing ding. It's, we don't call them potlucks. We call them wing dings now. 
We call them wingdings, right? Wingdings? On March uh, 24? Spring Wake, right? It's the Sunday before Spring Wake. We're going to have a wingding. We're going to have a wingding back here. Everybody's going to bring some food. We're going to eat, have church. But see, I don't, I don't plan my message around the wingding. I don't say, well, at 1230, we need to be done because we have food in the back. No, that would be silly. That would not be living in God's kingdom. The food can wait. We're going to preach righteousness, as peace, and joy. Yeah. And then we can eat some. <laughs> when the Spirit has His way. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. It's about righteousness, peace, and joy. So it's, it's definitely not about depression. And the world wants to get us down into the dumps, knock us out. Knock the joy out of us. Joy, they want us to be joyless. They want to kick us and kick us again. Have you noticed? Yeah. The world wants to kick the joy out of you. you. You start to get excited about God and they're like, oh, don't get so excited about that God stuff. Why? They don't want to hear it. Well, just pick it up a notch. Yeah, right. <laughs> Give them some more. Give them some more joy. Give them some more God. Amen. You there? You gone home eating ham? You don't eat ham. Turkey? You got turkey? I say I should say turkey now. You there? You gone home eating turkey? <laughs> Come on! God wants to lift us out of the pit. Enjoy a long life. Be blessed. You know, blessed means happy. He he, he wants us blessed. That means we're happy. Happy. That's blessed. That is blessed. When we bless, we happy. But we can't, we can't look at the natural to be happy. Right? It's like I'm saying, if you're in Christ, you're in Christ. So you are blessed. You are blessed. What I did, oh, how, come, how come they're so blessed and I'm not? Well, you in Christ? You blessed too. Amen. You blessed. Oh yeah, they might have some you don't have. You you jealous? Well, they get rid of that jealousy. Amen. Get rid of that. Amen. Come on now, and, and, and no, you're blessed too. Amen. That's right. Amen. And God has plenty more where that came from. Yeah. Come on, God doesn't run out of anything. Amen. God has God paves the streets with gold. Amen. Don't worry about that. Come on, seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. All these things will be added unto you. Yeah. You don't need to worry about the stuff. Seek him. Go after him. And now all, all of it comes. Amen. Amen. I'm preaching better than agreeing. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Come on. God wants us to enjoy the provision of joy. Amen. Every day. Every day we can have joy. But we need to do what he said. Amen. Amen. We can do what he said. Follow him. Stay close to him. Pray. Pray in tongues, sing melodies in your heart to the Lord, be filled with the Spirit, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, praying in the Spirit, building yourself up on your most holy faith. Come on. And uh, depression won't be able to grab hold of you. Amen. Why? Because you're filled up with the Spirit. You're filled. He filled up with God. Jesus was never depressed. Amen? Amen. He's not depressed. He's still not depressed. <laughs> and you know what else the Bible said to do? In Philippians 4 4. Yeah, we talked about 1 John 4 4. Now we do Philippians 4 4. <laughs> what does it say to do? Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say, rejoice. Let's do that. Right now. Yeah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Rejoice again. Rejoice again. 
Rejoice again. Rejoice again. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We rejoice in you. We rejoice in what you've done. We rejoice that we're in Christ forever. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Ha, 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 ha. Ha, 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 ha. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your name forever. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Woo. We are blessed. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, that we are blessed to be in Christ forever. We are victorious now. We are in Christ now. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus now. Thank you, Father. We rejoice in what you've done for us. We are filled with joy afresh tonight, thinking about what you've done for us. And Father, we're going to do what you said to do. We're going to be filled with the Spirit. We're going to pray in the Spirit. We're going to sing and make melody in our hearts unto you because we love you. And we know as we do, Father, we are filled with the Spirit and not depression can attach itself to us. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. You came to give us joy. So we thank you. We can walk in it. We can do it. We don't have to live like the world. We can live like Jesus lived and fulfill the plan of God with joy. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. We thank you for this time tonight. We thank you for your word. We thank you for a great fellowship time tonight, Father, as we celebrated your love and your joy. And we turn back and we give you all the praise, all the glory, all the honor, all the power belongs to our God forever and ever. In Jesus' name we pray and the church said, Amen. Amen.